the Mega DIY Battery Build Part 2. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But before we get to that, remember guys, follow me on Instagram. Also subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, because we are going to continue to upload as many videos as possible trying to share the amount of knowledge or the ideas or confusions that I have when it comes to this project. Now, on my last project, I presented you this little puppy right here, which is the module or the prototype that I'm working on for the big project, which is a solar farm mixed with crypto mining. Okay. Now, this is an ongoing project that I'm going to show you on my next video. Just Go over it. I'm not going to get into the details of crypto mining. I just want to show you what I've been doing and then give you little updates throughout the, the weeks and the days. But today I want to tackle a situation that I have. And maybe I don't know if the camera shows right here. I have a simple list that I want to go through uh, when it comes to the module. And now this module, you already seen it. You got an idea of what's going on. Uh, I haven't done anything from my last video to this one. I'm just trying to divide the information into little chunks so we can share knowledge. So that way I don't spend half an hour in one video talking about nonsense or stuff like that. Today, I wanted to ask you or share with you some concerns that I have when it comes to this project. Now, as you can see, this is a massive battery. And the main purpose for this one is that it's going to be ADP. It could be bigger, but I'm going to stick with ADP, at least for the testing phase. And which means it's going to be a massive battery. Like we're talking Roughly, maybe, let me do some math. So, so we got 80 cells times 14. We're talking roughly 1120 or 1120 cells. Now, I don't have the capacity to do the testing for that amount of cells. And this is how I get into the, the many issues that I got. But before I present you the ugly, let me present you the different security measures that I'm going to do. First of all, we are going to check, right? The visual inspection. By visual, we mean that you can take one of these batteries, right? And you check that there's no corruption or corrosion anywhere. You make sure there's nothing breaking, the insulation is okay. The second part of it is going to be we take measure of the voltage, right? So the first thing is that you, I, I'm going to look at the cells, then we're gonna measure voltage. Now, let me trace back a little bit. The reason why I'm explaining the security measure is that I still have a bunch of batteries on different containers in this house that, I, that Tom Ammerman from Battery Hookup uh, donated when we were at uh, the situation with Hurricane Maria. Now, those batteries, they're still in their cases. They haven't been touched because, you know, we are, went past the situation. And now I need to use them for something other than just being on my garage and collecting dust. For some of you that don't know who Tom Ammerman is, he's the owner of today's sponsor, Battery Hookup. Actually, they don't know they're promoting this video, but... Since I do get a discount uh, for 5% discount when you use the code Javier, uh, well, I want to share that with you. So go to batteryhookup.com and take a look at the different offerings they have when it comes to lithium batteries. They are actually the big player, like the big guys when it comes to recycle or secondhand storage. And they were the main guys that help out Puerto Rico when it when I got into a situation for Maria that I couldn't find batteries to help the families, they were the one that donated uh, a big pallet. I, I'm talking huge pallet, something that will cost them a lot of money. They donated it, which is the one that we're using for the project and which is why I'm giving them a shout out. So if you want to buy batteries for your projects, it could be a power wall made 
with the kits that I sell on my website like this, or it could be something simple like a flashlight, something like that. Just go to the battery, uh, battery hookup website and use the promo code Javier. They're going to give you a 5% discount. So there you go. Okay. Thank you. So back to the video. Now, like I say, I have a bunch of cells that I need to use them uh, because this little project, it's drawing a lot of energy. And even though I have a huge pan, uh, I got like seven panels and I'm going to buy like five more. When you mix the solar panels with the batteries, you get a pretty good amount of hours off grid, meaning that those hours that you're mining crypto, uh, it's going to be mostly profit, or at least it's going to be mostly to pay off uh, your investment. And then it's going to be mostly profit. If I manage to bake a huge battery using this type of setup, it would mean that if I can power the crypto mining rigs for at least 12 to 16 hours per day without using the grid energy, it's going to be roughly 60 to 70% profit doing that. So that's the main idea. But now that you know why I'm using those cells and why I'm building something this big, I need to explain to you uh why the purpose of this video and it's because since i have so many cells i cannot do capacity tests on them and i i, I could feel some of you looking at me like we are like oh you're not gonna do capacity tests you're gonna burn down your house you're gonna i don't know hiroshima part two uh nagasaki or whatever you're gonna blow up your house okay let me just Calm down a little bit. I can hear you through the internet in the future. Just calm down. If you look at my videos, I, I mentioned many times before, you need to do capacity tests on this. The reason for that, you want to make sure that if you build a pack that's going to be this size, you have a, 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 a very well balanced pack. Meaning that if you want to have 80 cells, those cells have at least 2000 milliamps you're going to have in 160 amp hours uh, of battery storage okay the problem is that that is good when you have a project uh i don't know you want to to power your house for example if you look at the image on the yeah right here on the far this is my left hand on your screen, it should be on the far right. That battery, which is, it doesn't have any type of insulation. As you can see, I got some corrosion going into it. It's four kilowatt hours. Those batteries were tested by battery hookup. And you know, I, that that's the battery that I'm using to power my, power my house. So this is why I got lights on this studio. I got internet and everything because I'm using that battery to power everything. I'm also using that battery when there, there's enough sun out there, it's been cloudy lately, to power the, the crypto mining rigs. But like I said, that little thing, it only has like uh, 10 GPUs. I, got, I still have like 10 more GPUs that I need to connect. But right now, as a stand, it's drawing 1.3, 1.4 kilowatt uh, per hour, which is huge. And you will say, well, how come you're using a sorry about that it's right here how come you're using such a small battery kill four kilowatt with such a big uh mining rig well it's because of the solar panels and that's how everything comes into play right now this is why i want to build something like this without testing why well first i need to get an roi or return of investment as fast as possible and also, I want to tackle one of the biggest issues that the community has. Can you mix different capacity cells in one pack? Okay. So if I take into consideration the amount of security that we need to build a battery, for example, first, like I mentioned, the visual inspection, like you will go through each one of the cells, you will look at them, you will see that there's nothing out of shape, you will see, for example, this one, when you look at cell like this, which I don't think I could possibly show you here because of the focus, 
you will look at a cell like that and said, you know what? That's damaged. Well, it is actually not damaged. That's just glue. Okay. So you will have to double check every single cell. I'm, I'm trying to look over here. Okay. This one. Let me see if I can focus on this one. There you go. Where you are. Come on, guys. Help me out. Okay. That cell right there. It might look, it looks kind of corroded, right? It is because I actually use a Dremel to remove some of the solder paste that I had over there. This one, you can see the corrosion over there. So this type of cell, I would not use. Even though it has capacity, it has voltage, I could probably use it just for the testing phase, but you will take care, you will have to be careful, or I will have to be careful before using some of the cells that I have. And I already have a bunch of cells already laying around, making sure that we can use them. So these are the security steps that I'm going to take. Some of them are, like I said, the visual inspection, make sure that everything is checked, no corrosion, doesn't look like the electrolyte, electrolyte, it's leaking out, everything looks good. Then we have the voltage read. For me, any cell, if I break open and pack and more than pack or something like that, and any cell has more than 2.5 volts, I will consider that good, good enough to make it into one of the modules. Then we want to buy, I want to buy, I don't know if I can buy one for this one. I have a few little calas that can do it. I want to measure the internal resistance of each cell while it's charging. Why? Do I want to measure it while it's charging? Because you're putting energy into it and the higher the resistance, the more degraded it is. And the more degraded it is, it's more susceptible. It is mostly susceptible to do a, a heat runaway. Uh, I don't mind this charging because it's one of these cells becomes a, a, a fire hazard because it, it has an internal short or it's outputting too much energy this is why we got fuses so these are the steps visual inspection battery uh, voltage uh, check 2.5 volts and up it's good enough for me internal resistance there's a white paper uh, a scholar paper that says that when the re internal resistance is way too high based on the data sheet from the manufacturer, it means that the cell is very degraded. So that is why it's important to measure it. I never took it into consideration before. Never thought it was going to be useful. <laughs> Guess what? It is now. Also, we're going to have fuses. Fuses, fuses, two amps. Uh, mostly they, they pop, believe me, they, they work. We're going to have a BMS on the battery. We are also going to discharge the battery up to, at most, 3.35 volts. So basically, the whole battery is going to be used as a buffer for the solar panel voltages. And trust me, there's a conclusion to all this. Uh, there's a question on the, on the end. But basically, what I want to do is I want to use the solar panels with the modules and when the voltage comes down from the solar panel, the battery is going to kick in as a buffer. So it's not necessarily going to be used as a after sun, uh, after sunset uh, battery. It might, it might happen. It might be useful that to know that this experiment, it's giving me right the amount of capacity that I need to continue using the mining rigs. I don't know, past 6 or 7 p.m. But I, I don't want to get into it right now um, just because, you know. So another security uh, step that I'm going to take after we assemble this, that it's packed, I want to try to put this into a metal case, something that I'm going to build. Hopefully, I'm going to show it to you. Why? Because if there's a heat runaway or there's a fire, just because one of the cells was bad enough and the fuser didn't kick in in time, we're going to have a, a everything outside the house to contain the fire inside a metal case. So those are the security measures that I'm taking. And also the plastic that we use for these things, once you get fire, 
it's going to melt. Any type of contact, it's going to disconnect. So it is designed by, to fail. And also the PVC panel that I'm using, like I mentioned, does not caught on fire easily. Like it has a, a, a chemical that suppress fire base and that's how they manufacture this. So the only risk, risk that I'm taking when it comes to this is I'm not doing capacity tests. And I'm assuming that at least every single one of these cells, based on my experience, they will have at least 1200 milliamps, maybe 1300 milliamps. In the really bad side, it's gonna be 1000 milliamps. Now, why am I, why do I wanna do something like this? Why I wanna put myself into the risk of putting, getting my house to blow up or blow up. It's not, it's never gonna blow up. Uh, at least caught on fire. I want to answer what would happen if you mix batteries with different capacity. Some of the studies that I've been reading, and I want to close out this video, it's taking way too long. If you mix a battery that has 1800 milliamps with a 1500 milliamps, uh, basically they're going to average out. So I want to know that instead of them having roughly, I uh, would we'll say that, uh, 3,300 milliamps in total, do we only have a 30 milliamp battery? Because the 18 is only going to be uh, charged up to the way of the, the weakest battery. One thing that we're going to do once we have a module assembled, we're going to put a, a we're going to charge it up, we're going to put a resistance to it, and we're going to load uh, the battery like it, it's been discharging the way it's supposed to. And hopefully that's going to give me a capacity for the whole system. Now, I'm done rambling. What do you guys think is going to happen? Or what are the things that I'm not looking into it, that I, I'm not paying attention to it, or I should not do it? I want to know what you guys think about this. I know some of you might not have the knowledge or the idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, but I know some of the guys that are following this channel for the past three years, they do know their stuff. I, be, I already been asking around. Some people say, well, you know what? You will not have the big capacity. Uh, for me, it's not about space. I have enough space. Where these batteries are going to be installed, I have enough space. And since I already have the batteries at my disposal, why not use them? Some people might think it's going to be a waste of time, but it's not a waste of money. So I'm willing to take a risk in the name of science and knowledge. So having said that, this is the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And hopefully you guys uh, understand what I'm trying to do. And leave your comments. I'm also always struggling with this. And leave your comments about what do you guys think might be the big issue if I do this. And also leave your comment on what you guys think about the new formats of the videos. Uh, this is my second video today in less than an hour. Uh, but it's gonna, you guys are going to see it like two days in the future. So anyway, thank you so much for your support. And remember, Jesus Christ loves you. And I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.